begin our uh, session's name is Will Metaverse Build a Society for the Better? So, uh, I want to start with, you know, uh, the crypto thing. Uh, what do you think? Will it prove to be a game changer in the metaverse? Shrinidhi? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, let me take that. So, first off, uh, very good afternoon to all of the people who have taken out the time to attend the session. I am Srinidhi, uh, the co-founder at Flippy, and I just want to take uh, a different angle towards this question as to, uh, if not crypto, what's the solution? Uh, instead of trying to plug crypto into this uh, entire ecosystem, right? So let's think about what Metaverse enables in the first place. It's sort of like an extension of a real-world experience or a real-world interaction virtually. So you're facilitating or you're enabling interactions with people uh, without any physical or even virtual boundaries for that matter. So when you talk about uh, an interactive space like that, uh, obviously there are going to be multiple people in it, uh, there are going to be businesses built on top of it, there are going to be experiences built on top of it. How would you power those experiences purely from a transactional perspective? What is going to power this new economy that is going to, uh, that is going to be created? And this is an economy, mind you, that is uh, projected to be around at least like three to five trillion dollars by all of these major uh, banks and all of these uh, major players in the space. So one of the things that crypto enables is it's obviously it's borderless. Uh, you, you have like instant settlements and your uh, assets are not tied to your identity, right? So these are like very fundamental factors. Your assets need not be tied to your identity. So what crypto enables over here is a very seamless and uh, it, it's sort of like a seamless way for people to transact within this economy and it's a technology that already exists. It's something that need not be built from the ground up for uh, this technology to grow, for metaverse to grow. But then again, uh, you know, there are multiple other factors that come into crypto. There are multiple other uh, aspects of crypto that could be beneficial. For example, ownership of assets. Uh, physical assets are uh, something that you can own and something that you can uh, transfer either in person or in value uh, to other people. Uh, Metaverse will also come with its own set of assets and with, with its own set of uh, uh, like valuable uh, things that people would like to own. NFTs are something that could enable that uh, in the Metaverse as well. So yeah, that's primarily what I think crypto could do in the Metaverse. And purely from like a transactional perspective, purely from an economy perspective, this three to five trillion dollar economy needs to be powered with some kind of uh, a currency or some kind of like a transactional uh, uh, economy. That is something that uh, the blockchain and the entire crypto ecosystem could help with to, in the so metaverse. Will be related with metaverse, you see it as a game changer. Definitely, uh, the game changing aspect will again be something that uh, crypto has already proved to be. It's uh, there's uh, there's a uh, there's a potential to create value or transfer value over the internet, which is something that Bitcoin started off with, and this potential to deploy applications and own unique assets uh, on the internet, something that cannot be uh, copied and pasted in its like, you know, most uh, fundamental manner. So that's something that will be very valuable, and that's something that's going to help scale metaverse. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be the primary application of crypto. Uh, Ankit, I come to you. Uh, if we talk about AI, uh, how do you see it is uh, beneficial for metaverse? and? Okay, um, uh, thanks Priya. Um, well, uh, before we begin the implications of AI or the applications of AI in the metaverse, uh, most of which is going to be covered by Ganesh. But anyway, I think I would like to uh, mention that the first VR headset that I purchased was six years ago from Xiaomi for 9.99. And very recently I purchased an Oculus for in excess of 30,000 bucks, right? I wonder how much the ecosystem has evolved, right? Uh, from the, from the uh, times when the VR heads, headset was only used for uh, viewing educational lessons with a more immersive experience wherein you can literally visualize the concepts of physics and chemistry in front of your eyes while being a part of the 3D environment to the evolution uh, into what we now call as metaverse, uh, you know, where the involvement of characters and brands have come into play, right? So there is a lot of uh, evolution that has happened in terms of use cases, right? Um, I, now uh, I see many startups attempting to create uh, interview uh, 
you know, a place for interviewing candidates or place for uh, doing group discussions, et cetera, within, within the metaverse spaces, right? Um, I think these, uh, these experiences are helping us in removing the biases uh, from our minds, right? When we have a face-to-face -face interview or let's say a video interview, there are biases around the color of the person, the gender of that person, the uh, facial features of that person and whatnot. I think all those biases get removed when we replicate uh, and create a parallel uh, environment in the metaverse space, right? Uh, so, uh, and that is why I think as startups, many people are figuring out multiple use cases. The other use case that I can talk about and which is very, uh, uh, you know, phone to me is um, a startup attempting to create mandir in metaverse, right? Wherein people can have that authentic spiritual experience uh, without the noise of the real world, right? Wherein you can literally focus on meditation or, or getting that peace of mind. Right? It's such a beautiful use case. I'm sure there are many more use cases that are going to come up. And just like in real world, in, 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 uh, in softwares, we try to implement AI to make it more uh, intelligent, make it more powerful and efficient. I think uh, it is the very early phase of metaverse where I think even the data collection has not yet begun. The user base is not at scale. There are only early adopters who are spending time there uh, or youngsters who are playing games there, right? Uh, as and when these use cases will evolve, more people will start adopting to those use cases, then the data collection would happen and, uh, and organically, naturally, uh, engineers will think about using the data and creating more intelligent uh, systems, right, through the use of AI. So I think there's a lot that is yet to come and we are only at the beginning of this journey. Um, uh, in fact, I remember at Bobble, we, we have been approached by some of our clients. A condom company want to create a, met, a, a space in Metaverse to create sexual health awareness, right? A ride-hailing company wants to create a space in Metaverse where they want to uh, do things for women empowerment, right? There are so many uh, brands who have entered into the game to leverage the engagement which is getting generated in those spaces, right? And these are deep immersive level uh, engagements which is hard to find in traditional inventory or traditional social media properties where people are while watching TV, they're also doing WhatsApp, right? So there's always a, a division of attention. But when it comes to metaverse, when you're wearing that VR headset, you are uh, completely involved in that experience. And this is where, uh, this is the gold mine for brands. And I see many brands attempting to create many uh, multiple use cases. With time, the involvement of AI will also begin. Okay. I, I hope. Thanks, Ankit. I think Vishal has joined us. Hi, Vishal. Hey, hi, 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 everybody. Uh, we are discussing, you know, how uh, Metaverse will build the society uh, for the better. So uh, I think uh, Ganesh will speak now. <coughs> yeah, so um, the subject is very interesting. Like uh, Ankit pointed out, we are in the very nascent stages in the Metaverse. Still, a lot of people are still figuring out what needs to be done, and a lot of experimentation is going on. But you know, really a great uh, potential, a huge uh, potential that is awaiting in front of us. You know, uh, people say this is the next internet. It's going to be three times bigger than internet. So what does that mean? So a lot of people are still experimenting and trying to figure out. So uh, with AI, you asked a question, how AI is going to have an impact on this metaverse, right? So that's a very interesting question, way too early. Uh, with the combination of AI and metaverse. Um, AI has been involved in certain aspects in, in, time, in uh, games probably like bots and things like that. You know, uh, AI is you know, one of the players that plays in the games. You know, certain, uh, we, we are used to chatbots uh, trying to interact with the user, collect the data and things like that. You know, that kind of a thing maybe it will be in metaverse. Once you know, people get into the metaverse, there would be AI players coming in, trying to collect, trying to collect the data and figure out how the user experiences. 
right? So it's way too early. But to answer your uh, question on metaverse, how it could uh, impact the society, I think that uh, that has a huge potential. There are multiple ways to think around, right? So metaverse on education, what benefits it can bring in, right? So right now, whatever we teach in school is, I think I, I can relate it as more of a 2D kind of thing. Can you make it more immersive? Right, you do your chemi chem uh, uh, chemistry ex uh, experiments, physics experiments. Can you take them into a digital object? Can you make them try? Right, for society, right. So, uh, depression is one thing. Right, can you solve depression through a digital uh, world? You know, fear of things. You know, fear of height. You know, can you solve things like that? Uh, through the digital world, right? Give them an experience, slowly take away their fear, right? So people have fear for animals, you know, certain pets, you know, they fear the dogs. How can you resolve this? So these things are the benefits that you can really bring through the digital twins or di the metaverse. So the scope is so huge, so many areas that you can work on, right? So he touched on cert certain uh, assets and certain NFTs and values that can be brought in to the metaverse and the commerce that can be built, the economies that can be built. So that the scope is you know, such a large thing. So very nascent at the moment, and that's where we stand. Okay, uh, Vishal, I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think, like, uh, how metaverse will shape the future of technology? If you want to, like, if you share your thoughts on it. So I think uh, you know there is a lot of misconception about what is a metaverse, and a lot of people think of it as VR and 3D and all these things. The problem is that. Metaverse is actually way beyond all of these concepts because this is just a way to access the metaverse. I think a lot of people just think that because there is a 3D avatar and you are in a virtual world and you're wearing a Oculus, suddenly you are in the metaverse. Absolutely no. Uh, I think what is really happening is, and you know, and as you know, we are working closely with Animoca brands on the concept of not just metaverse but an open metaverse. I think what has happened is currently the world is dominated by five platforms, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, Twitter, uh, and of course, a bunch of other smaller platforms. And all of us as users are locked into these platforms. Our data resides in these platforms. Our profiles reside in these platforms. We are the one generating data, generating engagement, generating content but we have no say, no ownership, no rights of any kind on the platform. Facebook, Instagram can decide which account to shut, which account to block. There is no recourse. Uh, you know, everybody here has had some of the other experiences of their accounts getting hacked and all kinds of things happening. So I think the fundamental thing about the metaverse and Web3 is for the first time we are saying that can users of a platform have the control and have a say in how the platforms are run? So think of what democracy did to the world. You know, previously, I mean, of course, there are still monarchies and dictatorships, but what the concept of democracy came in, and that's how we as a country and there are rules and we all able to vote and participate. I think that same concept is going on to the Web3 platform. And these platforms are not apps. They are all called metaverses. So metaverse is actually a broader definition of defining a space where all of us are collaborating together. Now, the user interface can be different. I can access the metaverse on my phone using a 2D interface. I could be using the Oculus. I could be using a monitor. I could be using augmented reality. Those are just different ways to access the metaverse. And similarly, your profile. Currently, our profile is one photograph with your name. That's it. But that profile will become a 3D avatar. And that 3D avatar will now be interoperable. I think that is the bigger fundamental thing. That just like if I travel from Bombay to Delhi to Bangalore to Boston, 
I can take my bag with clothes in it, which I purchased from five different places and I can carry my clothes, my books, my things with me anywhere I go and I can use them. But if I buy a digital object inside a particular app, like if I have an image inside Facebook or if I have uploaded a video on Instagram, it's not interoperable because in the first place, I don't own it. I can't take it anywhere and suddenly the copyright and everything belongs to someone else. So I think NFTs are going to become your digital assets, which you will carry just the way how you put a painting in your house. Once I buy, uh, you know, Akshay's NFT, uh, which is so beautiful, I can decide to put it on sandbox. I can put, put it on decentral land. I can put it in my own house or tomorrow I can decide to just not put it anywhere and just leave it in my wallet. So I think what we are talking about from a metaverse perspective is a much broader context. And uh, I think it's, it's very good that we are having this discussion because there is a lot of confusion around what metaverse is. And lastly, the whole concept of cryptocurrency actually is not at all relevant in the metaverse discussion. Because you could decide to not use a currency, you could decide to use a currency, you could decide to use a subscription model, you could decide to use a freemium model. So once you decide a, a user interface and a community guidelines, you can then decide what is the way the community is going to transact. So it's, 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 a, it's of course a very, very evolving, uh, evolving project, but I'm saying that in the next five to 10 years, most of the large platforms will not exist or will become very small because we'll all be wanting to use platforms where I get compensated for my data and I have ownership on the platform. Okay, very well said, Davis. I, I think I would like to compliment. You know, right now, uh, Metaverse people relate with VR headsets. Yeah. You know, uh, well pointed out. You know, that's, uh, and uh, to add to what Vishal said, you know, a lot of times we are just thinking consumer market on metaverse it is beyond that you know even industrial use cases you know if you are looking at uh, you know chemical plants you know pharmaceuticals healthcare you know how can you create digital uh, you know twin of it you know maybe you can in, you know put in uh, a create a digital twin of a, you know oil and gas plant and then how can you utilize that so all these are part of the huge ecosystem that we are looking at would also like to uh, know from you you know the potential of nft is huge so where do you see that in the metaverse like can you um so it, like uh, we shall pointed out you know and you know uh, it's all if you build everything based on blockchain and uh, the nfts are you know if there is real utility you know uh, that's that's uh, you know i would say the real utility nfts uh, would carry on the values. You know, if you own a certain asset inside a metaverse, and if it is an NFT attached to it, and you know, then you will be able to trade that, and then uh, the value goes up. And you know, that's that's what I'll say. Uh, maybe I can add to it. Um, I think in today's time, uh, NFT uh, in the digital format might have certain value, but its value gets unlock when we link it with some tangible aspect in the physical world as well. For I can give certain examples. Recently, uh, we, we were award partners for some event, 30 under 30, and each of the award winners, uh, the physical award got replicated or minted as NFT uh, in Bobble storefront, wherein they got access, exclusive access to that particular ownership of that particular NFT which also uh, incentivized them for a lifetime membership and discount for certain, certain things, right? So that way we were able to appreciate that winner or the, uh, the one who won that award uh, in tangible format, apart from validating it through a unique uh, identification in blockchain via NFT, um, which they can cherish and keep for their lifetime. Right. I think such use cases will keep coming in where that uh, validation is required. I remember one of the use cases uh, from another startup I was talking to, uh, which used blockchain for validating the student degrees. Right? 
they are trying to create that database wherein they can validate student degree in very quickly and efficiently without actually talking to the university, right? Or for that matter, doing background ver verifications for employees. All of these data points which are, which needs to be uh, stored in a decentralized manner uh, to give democratic access to all the stakeholders, uh, plus uh, which the facts which cannot be changed later on, right? I think such use cases will keep coming up and that can be capitalized through NFTs. Yeah, I think great points being made from all three speakers and panelists. So uh, just wanted to touch down on one of the th points that we talked about earlier as to what will help us scale this technology better, right? I think we already talked about uh, interoperability, uh, which is something that Vishal pointed out. One more thing that we have to take care of is something called composability, right? Uh, while uh, it's possible to take assets from one space to the other or like one experience to another experience, it's also important for us to think about how can we build on top of each other's work. Uh, a simple example would be what GitHub did to code or what open source did to code, right? Uh, now I can download any piece of open source software, open, open source code base and build on top of it. Uh, for example, what Android open source uh, project is uh, in the operating system world where people can just download the source code of Android and build experiences on top of it. Samsung is building its own uh, custom experience on top of Android. It's very important that we think about it uh, in a very similar fashion because there is so much talent and there's so much centralization of talent and uh, code and uh, development. It's very important that it's made accessible to the rest of the people and the rest of the developers so that you don't need heavy investment or heavy upfront investment to build your own experience or to create your own experience or to build on top of uh, uh, someone else's uh, work. So I think that is a very important uh, aspect of it. And again, coming back to the first question, right? I think this is something that uh, we were discussing, discussing yesterday as well, which is uh, how do you uh, ensure that, uh, for example, how, what is the min how do you ensure that everybody gets access to it, right? One of the points that you uh, wanted to discuss about is the democratization of this technology. Uh, it's very important that, uh, like Vishal and uh, Ganesh and like obviously all of the rest of our speakers have also mentioned, it's very important that we don't think of it as a purely uh, VR and uh, 3D kind of an experience. It's very important to understand how do we define the min spec or like the minimum specification of hardware required to access something like this. The min spec should not be like an 8K uh, VR headset with 120 FPS so that we don't get a headache. It could uh, probably be as simple as accessing it on like a 5,000 or a 6,000 rupees phone uh, so that, you know, while the technology develops with the needs of the people, uh, you know, it, there's a path uh, that is uh, defined uh, based on the number, kind of users that participate in the ecosystem. If it's premium and if it's rich and if it's highly uh, uh, sophisticated hardware which is going to give you access to this technology, it's not going to progress towards uh, catering to like, you know, five, six, seven or eight billion dollar, eight billion people that uh, would technically should have access to the technology. It's going to be the select few with like high spending propensity and, you know, it's not going to be a shared or like a democ democratized experience for everyone. No, I, I think I just disagree on that one part, right? I think uh, it is not really about, it's already democratized, right? I mean, we are already, the whole world, every person in India uses WhatsApp today. The only difference is WhatsApp is centralized. I mean, your data is stored in, you know, I don't even know where it is stored <laughs> or what encryption it's being used. But yeah, WhatsApp today controls your data. Facebook today controls your data. You will now have another app where for the first time you would know where your data is, who controls it, when you delete your data, it actually gets deleted. And if somebody is using your data, you will know and maybe you will even get compensated for it, right? So I don't think so. It's about access. Everybody has a smartphone and I think people will only get more powerful smartphones and all of that, right? It's really about these apps and services and these products getting more popular. I think that's really the question. I don't think so. It's anything about access per se. Okay, all right. Uh, I come back to you, Vishal, again. I, uh, uh, you know, to 
I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, if we talk about the benefits of metaverse, uh, where do you see uh, it will help solve, you know, real world issues? Do you think uh, it has the potential or uh, it's too early? I mean, just think about what UPI has been able to do in India from payments. Think about UP UPI is a public utility, right? It's the government who created a platform, said no MDR. Today, you know, there are billion dollar corporates like Visa and MasterCard who had a little monopoly in this space and today a public utility like UPI which is created and now you know the whole system is open anybody can connect to it has suddenly created a payment industry which is completely different uh, very very democratized I mean all of us have access to it the poorest person to the richest person can use UPI and similarly the smallest merchants right from a street vendor to the biggest store is able to use UPI. I think that is what is the power of uh, blockchain and metaverse and Web3 applications in general. That today think about all the apps we are using where we are contributing data. All of those apps will change. Imagine all the millions of people who upload videos on YouTube and then we are the people who see videos on YouTube. But who is making money? Google is you know, showing now 10 ads in one video and we taking all the money away. The producer, the content creator is, is making pittance, a very small share. As a user, you are not making any money. And just think about Entrepreneur Magazine. You know, as, a, as, a, as a media house, you, know, you are forced to give your content away for free to these platforms and you are not making any money or very, very small money in terms of advertising. Now, if there is a new platform which says that, hey, instead of YouTube, upload your video on my platform and I'm going to reward you with tokens. And similarly, every time an advertiser is coming, they are going to use tokens. The consumers who are viewing these videos will use tokens. And suddenly, and there is a right distribution, you know what percentage will go to who and so on and so forth. Suddenly, you are creating a business model where the content creator and the content consumer is the center of it, not a third person who is the content mediator. Today, that is what is happening, that content mediators, like we say, right, it is the Dalal who is making more money than the, the you know, that same thing happened in farmer also, right? The farmer is the producer and the consumer and the middleman is taking away everything. That is literally what is happening in the world of internet. Uh, data, as we say, is the oil. Imagine all the data today is sucked in by these five or six large companies and that is what the Web3 and Metaverse is going to change and we are all going to be part of it. The best part is this is already happening. So I'm saying that in the next three to five years, you are going to see real applications starting to use this. So this is really the next, this is Internet 3.0, right? You know, Internet 1.0 was all about you, you know, you, uh, Yahoo and it was all that kind. It was more information led. Internet 2.0 became social where everybody was contributing and there was Facebook and now Internet 3.0, which is Web3, what we call, is all going to be about the participating economy where the two sides of the marketplace of content creators and producers and same thing even in the enterprise space will change. Okay, all right. Uh, you want to share some insights? Uh, solving real world issues uh, um, yeah absolutely and I gave some examples you know how uh, it could solve certain real uh, issues yeah, with talked about fear and all right that. so those are some of the things I think I see real value in it um, I, you know like we all pointed out as well and you know Ankitna also pointed out that there's a uh, lot more opportunity here you know social media changed how people consume content so this is a platform for the content creators, you know, and the content consumers, li rightly put. So uh, we had, if you see, yeah, we had uh, radios and then TVs, then internet came. And now this is the new dimension that we are looking at. So beyond the internet, the much more immersive, how can you keep people engaged, right? So uh, keep keeping the uh, people engaged and that's going to be the next uh, dimension. How can you provide customized thing that people need, exactly what they need 
uh, how to how to give them access to them. So these things are the new uh, ideas that would be coming out of the metaverse. Okay, one thing, one sector uh, which is coming to my mind is education. If you want to talk about how uh, you know metaverse will change it. Sure, I think I already gave a couple of examples around educational uh, interfaces that can be created in the metaverse. <laughs> Um, well, if, if we look at the core of it, I think it's the, just like an artist lives in fragmented reality and, uh, you know, uh, creates a narrative, an alternate narrative of the reality and, um, and portrays it through a medium, here the medium is metaverse, which is an open canvas right now for, art, uh, for people like us to sort of create real state which can solve certain uh, real problems, right? And one of the problem areas is, of course, education. I think um, the accessibility and the immersiveness of Metaverse is going to definitely help educators as well as students uh, to get deeply engaged um, uh, with solutions out there. Now, having said that, the challenge still remains the uh, infrastructure uh, or uh, the current infrastructure that uh, India has, um, I think it's at a very early stage where the infrastructure needs to penetrate in order for people to take advantage uh, of the uh, metaverse solutions around uh, education. Um, secondly, I think um, the shared experiences needs to be more empowered within the metaverse. Um, things like the feeling of senses, uh, you know, the, the senses like seeing, touching, uh, smell, uh, what not, right? All of those senses um, need to be recreated. And for those reasons, there's a need for research or more deeper research around haptic technologies that, that can help us uh, get similar feeling in metaverse like the way we get in the real world. I think that would lead to uh, metaverse becoming more emotion driven and senses driven than just graphics, AR and VR. Yeah, these are a couple of uh, points from my Your side. Yes. So on the, on the education front, I just want to add that, uh, you know, Animoca has invested in a very interesting uh, company called Brainy Tap. I think you should look up Brainy Tap. So Brainy Tap is going to be its first metaverse focused on education with an amazing concept of what they are calling study to earn. <laughs> so just like how play to earn, which has come in the gaming world, uh, the idea is that can we create an ecosystem where teachers and students, as they are either teaching or studying, it gives them an ability to make money. So that is one very big theme around studying to earn. And at Goki, we are also taking the same theme to health. And we are saying, can you be healthy to earn uh, and make that a livelihood by earning tokens? So I think this whole idea around education, health, and a few other domains where motivation is a big challenge, right? So literally, we are telling people that, hey, please study because just the act of studying itself can make you money. Forget about the education, which will, of course, make you even more uh, valuable later. You want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to touch upon, uh, like, you know, uh, the points that were put uh, forth earlier regarding how data is going to work and how uh, interoperability and composability is going to work. So uh, a thought just crossed my mind. So, like, you know, basically uh, it's known now how, how important data is for you because it's very simple, right? They drive ads or they drive certain interactions from their uh, users, which will drive to certain purchases or certain kind of transactions, which is going to end up making money. So the more uh, uh, data you have on a user, the more uh, uh, the more uh, you the more money you can uh, pull out of their wallet. Uh, and yeah, so companies don't need to know you; they just need to know your vector representation. That's all they want to uh, do, right? They want to create like a bunch of zeros and ones that's going to let them know what exactly uh, you're going to purchase or what exactly is going to uh, make you transact. Uh, so from that perspective, I do believe that uh, there will be a lot of uh, fight between centralization and decentralization even in metaverse. I do not believe that directly uh, all of the big money that is going into metaverse is going to uh, give up ownership 
over data, there needs to be an active, or there needs to be an active development and an active fight by the overall community to take back the ownership of their data. So Metaverse does not inherently enable uh, data decentralization or data ownership of uh, the data producers. So if we produce data, if we have certain interactions, we do not inherently own that data. Uh, there needs to be uh, layers or protocols built on top of the metaverse experience or on top of, for example, something like a blockchain, which enables uh, like, you know, permissionless access or like, you know, uh, signed access to data. Something like that would be more beneficial towards uh, uh, the data that is produced and the assets that are owned in the metaverse than inherently expecting data to be decentralized uh, uh, in the metaverse. So, yeah. Questions from the audience? Any questions? Yeah, that. Hi. Uh, good evening to everyone. So my question is to Ankit. Ankit, hi. Amit from Plants Karidu. I'm using your product and amazing product you have. Now hope the entire India and Bharat will use your amazing product. So, uh, ek, uh, Question ye tha ki we are very enthusiastic or energetic about the foreign products or uh, US market mein jo digital build hota hai, usko leke hote hain ya Chinese products, agar koi aaya TikTok, we are very enthusiastic. So can we expect ki if uh, we landed in the London or if we are Frankfurt or Amsterdam, then wahan ka koi kid bole ki, okay, you are from India and the product you are using from Bubble AI from Europe country. So can we expect that type of expectation from you guys? Yeah, that's what the dream is, and I'm sure you and I and many, many of us will do that, will we'll achieve it, make it happen. Yes, indeed, that's the dream of the startup community today in India, that we, while we solve for India, and this is a saying I remember when I was in a Euro trip, like you mentioned, um, uh, during my college days, uh, they used to say that if you solve a problem for India, you are automatically solving it for the world because there is so much diversity here that if you are able to create that level of personalization, that level of uh, inclusion, then it automatically includes uh, various parts of the world. Right? Uh, so for those reasons, I think we are, we are in the right market at the right time with the right set of resources and mindset. Uh, if we can't do it now, we'll never be able to do it. But I'm pretty sure that uh, the startup community in India today is uh, all prepared to take over the world. We have seen instances like Baiju's uh, sponsoring the FIFA World Cup and so on and so forth, right? So the day is not far that you'll start seeing many such products out there when you land on Amsterdam. All right, any other question? Uh, Please pass on the mic. Yes, lady. hi. My question that uh, just a very straight question, like uh, how Metaverse is going to help uh, in agriculture sector and health sector? When I uh, ask uh, health, like I'm typically asking the question, like our doctor, if doing a surgery, then how Metaverse will uh, help in that? And agriculture also, uh, if you throw some light. Then. Yeah, so I... Th I th um, um, health sector is one of the major uh, places that Metaverse definitely can bring uh, an impact. So, which is actually already happening with certain uh, companies. So, the, what they have done is um, in, they have created a digital twin of human bodies. This is uh, to, if, if you want to give a training for a doctor, um, in, you can use this digital twin of the body instead of you know actual you know, rats or things like that. So uh, this is one area, and another area is now with uh, metaverse. You know they are able to digitally you know come into a, the, the digital world. Uh, even though you are sitting across, a specialist doctor is sitting across the world, and you are able to connect to uh, the patient um, uh, and the doctor nearby him and provide assistance uh, through uh, using the digital twin of a body. So you can show this is exactly where you, know, you need to this kind of a procedure and things like that. And especially the, the doctor sitting next to the patient, he needs advice from a specialist doctor. So certain things like that is already starting to happen. 
and uh, how uh, it is going to help in uh, agriculture sector? Agriculture. Agriculture. Uh, so I would probably leave it up to you guys to answer the agriculture bit, but uh, just to answer the insurance sector, uh, insurance uh, part of the question better, I, I feel uh, my opinion would be there, there is a need for an oracle. Uh, what I mean by an oracle is something that provides a continuous stream of uh, access to a continuous stream of data from the real world uh, into the metaverse or like, you know, we're already seeing like technologies built, technologies being built, something like a chain link that provides access to real world events and real world data to the blockchain. We need an analogy of that or like we need an equivalent of that uh, for the metaverse to prosper as well as, uh, you know, the insurance sector in the metaverse uh, to prosper. So we're already seeing examples of uh, connected elements or like, you know, uh, uh, things like uh, uh, blood oxygen monitoring, continuous uh, blood oxygen monitoring. Uh, and if you think about like, you know, vehicles, you know, there, there needs to be a better way for uh, you to translate or your transfer or have an, an analogous uh, element of your real world assets in the metaverse as well. So that there are uh, elements of your, uh, let's say, health profile or elements of uh, your driving skill or like your driving, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ability. Uh, Something, uh, something of that sort needs to be translated into the metaverse, something that could be continuously tracked and be visualized right in front of your eyes so that you can course correct yourself as well as uh, the insurance companies will have a better visibility uh, into what your risk profile or your health profile or uh, overall what is your vector representation like uh, for them to be able to make better uh, uh, risk-related decisions. But yeah, I will leave it up to... So I think I just want to add one thing that, you know, it is the right question is not what will happen to health in metaverse or insurance, right? Nothing is going to be different. Metaverse and Web3 is more around the use of data, where data is stored, who owns the data, data security. It's largely around those applications and how is the business model of people's compensation. So it's not that metaverse is suddenly agriculture mein kuch naya ho jayega, aisa nahi hoga. Of right, course, right. The, the same application will have a different business model and that is the key differentiation between the metaverse and anything else. It's not as much about something new because, for example, today there is a place called Fortnite game where you can do a lot of these things online. The only difference is Fortnite is not open. It's a closed system owned by a particular company. So you are able to do uh, virtual surgeries, robotic surgeries, even today with or without the metaverse. The question here yes. is the data. That is really what you need to think about and what happens to your digital assets, which you are purchasing today in any ways in these apps and what happens to them. It is largely around those questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look, I'm not sure um, how an insurance company can build a core use case in metaverse. But I'm definitely sure that any company, be it any sector, can at least do marketing and advertising on Metaverse, right? And yeah. that's what we enable at Bobble. Happy to talk. <laughs> Thank you. I think you. just one more question we'll take from that lady. Yeah, please go on. Uh, hi to everyone here. Uh, I am Betty Nangia, the owner of the brand Betty Skincare. So though the questions which poured out just now did give me a clarity, but still, as Vishal mentioned, like, like a person like me who has to popularize my brand and reach to every person. So our platforms are naturally Instagram, Amazon, Flipkart, right? Now I want to know is how Metaverse is going to help us in our brand. People are going to see us there or it is just my locker that I have there. So I just needed a clarity there. What is the category of your brand? Which product? Betty's you... skincare, all personalized uh, skincare products basically. And I'm into wellness also, energy. So I think, I think one, one big difference in the metaverse is that it is now going to be how your brand can embed inside the experience. So think about if there is a virtual character, can this virtual character apply your product in the metaverse and become younger or their skin can glow? It is no longer about showing an ad and saying click here, which is how the current advertising model works where they interrupt you you are seeing a program or you are seeing scrolling something and suddenly there's an interruption and there is an ad which is shown and then you are supposed to act. In the metaverse, if you see a lot of experiences and, it, and I think the best example is you should look at Sandbox. Sandbox is integrating 
एक ब्रांड एक्सपीरियंसेस विद इन द प्रोडक्ट इट सेल्फ सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल दे आर क्रिएटिंग टाइम स्क्वेर इन साइड द मेटावर्स वेन यू गो इन साइड टाइम स्क्वेर यू विल बी एबल टू सी दीज बिल्डिंग्स विद होल्डिंग और देर इज एन एंटायर ब्यूटी स्ट्रीट where there are brands where your avatar can go and try the the latest cosmetics and so on so i think it is going to be a lot more experiential marketing rather than uh, the current form of marketing so how are the people going to come to us going to be open platform like amazon and uh, flipkart and instagram yeah, so, so think about it like a like a mall where people will be coming in with their 3d avatars So typically, I mean, if you if you can Google some of the Unilever campaigns, and Unilever is also uh, having one of the categories as skincare. Unilever has launched multiple uh, metaverse campaigns, um, and I guess there is one for skincare as well, wherein they create experiences. So why, uh, whether you use your smartphone or you use your VR headset to enter into that space and go through that experience. During that experience, they highlight different USPs of the product. It, that experience could be as simple as a game, right? You're running around and finding out things. It's like a puzzle or something, right? Wherein you are trying to figure out the nuances of the USPs of the product that you are selling. And at the same time, you are enjoying that experience, right? So your product becomes an integral part of that experience and therefore creates a deep impression in the subconscious mind of the player. right so this is how bigger brands are already attempting to create experiences around their products and categories and be uh, uh, you know and create a deeper connection with the end consumer which is otherwise not possible in traditional channels like instagram and facebook where you can just display your uh, thing but you cannot actually make them interact or make them uh, deeply uh, engage with your uh, product right yes the characters have been added emotions have been added and people are living that world right so they are living that your product but, but anyway so your category itself is quite uh, contradictory to the concept of metaverse wherein people want to remove those biases right whether you are fair or you are dark or you know whether you have got a pimple or you don't have a pimple i think all of those biases are getting removed in the metaverse but yes there could be innovative campaigns uh and uh, yeah it's something that needs to be brainstorm brainstorm upon and it is going to be impactful uh thank you vishal so much uh, it was a valuable insight you uh, did and thank you panelists